to be part of this exciting announcement, naming Philadelphia as the host city for the Forbes Under 30 Summit. <laughs> Mayor Nutter, Randall Lane, and the delegates from this year's 30 Under 30 who are changing the world. Um, we'll talk more about the summit, but I just wanted to say a few words about this great city. For years, we've said that Philadelphia is a city on the rise. In fact, Forbes recognized the dynamic resurgence back in 2012 and named Philadelphia a comeback city. Thank you for doing that, by the way. That designation was due in large part to the influx of young creative people that are increasingly calling Philadelphia home. I'm constantly inspired by this generation, or dare I say my generation, constantly changing the world, the nation, and even local government. We are your tweeters and your Facebookers. So for those folks still holding out, get used to it. I'm excited to welcome the best and brightest game changers to Philadelphia, where the game was changed originally and where the idea of America was born. Philadelphia is an amazing place to be. It has everything from arts, culture, shopping, restaurants, lots of great food, sports, parks, history, and the biggest free outdoor concert in the nation. I can go on and on. It has a can-do spirit and a willingness to embrace creativity and innovation unmatched in other cities. Philadelphia has a global sensibility and a small town feel all at once. It is flexible and it has potential to make Philadelphia a truly dynamic city. We are dynamic. And Philadelphia has vision. A vision not only about what's next, but how do we get there. That kind of vision takes leadership. Mayor Michael Nutter is that leader. Over the last few years, he has worked to make Philadelphia a cleaner, greener, smarter, safer city and a more ethical and transparent government. He came into office with a big plan for a new day in Philadelphia, and he's making it just so. And even though he's not quite under 30, you hit that mark a <laughs> long time ago, we still might let him come to the summit. So ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Michael Nutter. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Desiree, thank you very, very much. Um, uh, to start things off, I want to thank Desiree for her leadership and creativity. She, of course, is the uh, city representative, uh, director of communications and strategic partnerships. And so let's uh, make clear what uh, actually happened here. It was a, a conversation that started uh, between uh, Desiree and uh, Randall, who you'll meet uh, in a second, uh, Randall Lane. Uh, one thing led to another, and uh, we're here at this announcement today, but this was really Desiree's idea, uh, and she told me about it, and of course, uh, I said, let's, uh, let's go for it. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Uh, this is the first of its kind, uh, and uh, we could not be more excited to be a part of this. Uh, earlier today, uh, Desiree was already in New York. I came up to New York, and uh, Randall and Mia were there, and we had the opportunity uh, to uh, make this announcement on uh, Morning Joe. And so uh, yesterday uh, when I told uh, Lisa I had to uh, go to uh, New York early in the morning uh, to be on the Morning Joe show to announce this, and she said, it's the what? I said, it's the under 30 summit. And she said, well, what do you have to do with that? Uh, I said, I have to make the announcement. <laughs> That's all I have to do. Um, we're honored to have uh, Randall Lane here, of course, editor, Forbes uh, magazine, and the entire Forbes media team. I want to thank them. You're going to meet some amazing young people who really are young uh, and amazing uh, behind me uh, in a few moments. Uh, Jamel Larkins, who's the founder of Ascension Air Management. Joshua Summer, executive director uh, of the uh, Cordoma uh, Foundation. And Joyce Meng, uh, co-founder, member, and senior analyst of Giveology. Today really is an exciting day for the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. And as uh, Desiree mentioned, we really are uh, the original innovation city, clearly a city of firsts. The first public library, first arts institution in the country, first hospital, first real computer. Some of you may remember, you can Google this, ENIAC, uh, which is actually out at the University of Pennsylvania. And really the first startup. That would be the United States of America. Created here, born here, we made it happen right in Philadelphia. And our city has always welcomed new and great and creative people, the innovators, and the forward thinking. And that's why people are choosing Philadelphia. Our population has grown every year since 2007. 
We're home to 101 colleges and universities in the tri-state tri area, turning out well-educated and ambitious young thinkers, and they're staying here. We're now keeping nearly half of our non-native local college students. That's part of the reason why Philadelphia has also experienced the largest percentage growth of millennial population of any major city in the United States of America. In just the last few years, we've announced more than $7.5 billion worth of economic development activities since January of 2013. That's announced. Many of those projects have already started or under construction or soon to have shovels in the ground. And projects that will truly transform Philadelphia and our skyline. And whether it's a small business startup with five people or the newly announced $1.2 billion Innovation and Technology Center at Comcast, all of these businesses, large and small, are setting up shop in Philadelphia, expanding here because we have a business-friendly environment, and our administration works every day to keep them happy. We're supporting startups and uh, the businesses uh, with our startup PHL program, or the support for already existing businesses who participate in the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Initiative, partnered with our own local community college of Philadelphia. But it isn't just business and entrepreneurs that see Philadelphia for the great city that we are. The Barnes Foundation, of course, chose our corridor of culture, the beautiful Ben Franklin Parkway, for the uh, Barnes, uh, uh, Barnes Foundation Museum. Jay-Z, a New Yorker, chose Philadelphia as the first site for the Budweiser Made in America Festival, coming back for MIA3 on this upcoming Labor Day, and this year, the first bi-coastal festival of course, with our great partner, City Los Angeles, and Eric, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti. Pope Benedict, and reinforced by Pope Francis, are bringing the Pontifical Council. They chose Philadelphia for the World Meeting of Families in September of 2015, the first time ever the World Meeting of Families will take place in the United States of America. They chose Philadelphia. And so today, we are excited to announce that Philadelphia has been chosen first once again. Forbes selected Philadelphia as the host city for its first ever under 30 summit. Think about it. Philly, you got to love it and you live it. The under 30 summit, Forbes' largest in its 97-year history, will bring together more than 1,000 young entrepreneurs and game changers from across the country to share ideas, collaborate, and innovate. From October 19th to the 22nd, the summit will host panels, presentations, of course, music and food, a whole lot of festivals, and it all happen right here in Philly. The goal of this summit is pretty straightforward and simple, to inspire these young people to work together and change the world. These young people are, in many instances, the best and the brightest in our country. And when people my age talk about the next generation of leaders, we're actually talking about many of the young people uh, we're talking about these young people, many of whom are right behind me. Innovators, creators, disruptors, people who see things that the rest of us actually don't. You'll hear from three of these incredible under 30s in just a few minutes, and I promise you that the, you will be thrilled. But first, let me introduce Randall Lane, editor of Forbes Magazine. Randall is a University of Pennsylvania alum and still very active, Penn's Communications Committee and, the daily, and is a daily Pennsylvanian trustee one of my favorite newspapers. He's touched many uh, parts of the entrepreneurial world uh, during his time as editor of Forbes, but he's also experienced the startup scene firsthand, giving, giving him a very well-rounded perspective. Randall's incredibly passionate about the under 30 under 30. We are changing the world list. Let's give uh, Randall a big, big Philadelphia applause and welcome him back to the great city. Mary, it is great to be back, and you know I do consider this my second hometown. Uh, I first came to Philly in uh, 1986, and the four years I spent here while attending Penn uh, shaped how I see the world uh, and the unlimited potential of entrepreneurship and out-of-the-box thinking. And I've been coming back ever since to serve on nonprofit boards, to pursue stories, and just to spend uh, time with friends in, in the city that I love. So Philadelphia was the only host that Forbes looked for uh, when we were uh, conceiving the Forbes Under 30 Summit. 
Uh, Mayor Nutter made it clear from our first meeting that the under 30 summit belongs in the place that spawned America's first startup, uh, now boasts the fastest growing population of millennials uh, in the country. Uh, we had no desire to take it anywhere else, uh, and we'd like to see the Forbes Under 30 Summit do for Philadelphia uh, what South by Southwest uh, does for Austin, uh, to serve as a catalyst uh, for a city that's already doing great things. Uh, we'd like to thank Mayor Nutter uh, and his office, especially uh, Desiree Pedrick Bell, uh, for making this happen here. Uh, so what is the Under 30 Summit? Uh, quite simply, uh, it's a get-together of America's top young entrepreneurs, thinkers, and doers. Uh, in just its third year, Forbes' annual 30 Under 30 list, uh, biggest game changers in 15 different fields, uh, has become a phenomenon. Uh, this January, the 30 Under 30 generated more than 8 million page views just during the first week it launched online. And part of the reason for the intense global interest is the selectivity. Every member of the 30 Under 30, which now numbers over 1,000 strong, has been hand-selected by our judging panels encompassing the biggest names uh, in each respective field. Steve Case judging technology, Michael Eisner judging entertainment, Isaac Mirahi judging style and design, and so on. This elite group will now come to Philadelphia with a mission that's nothing short, as Mayor Nutter said, of changing the world. A Davos, uh, if you may, for millennials. Looking at the long term, this is the most influential group in America with a professional runway that will stretch for 50 years. Through panels, presentations, and breakouts, the under 30 summit delegates will spend their days swapping ideas, collaborating, cooking up business plans, and creating partnerships. At night, we'll hear from the top under 30 bands, eat food from the top under 30 chefs in America, and explore Philadelphia through private dinners, happy hour meetups, and pub crawls with a world-class mentor planted at each stop. And maybe we can get the mayor, maybe we'll let you in on that one there. I've got a few personal favorite stops there. Uh, mentorship will play a big role. Uh, the Under 30 Summit will feature the biggest names in every field in that role. Restaurateur Danny Meyer will mentor in food and wine. Facebook's legendary investor Jim Breyer will, will mentor in venture capital. 76ers owner Josh Harris, co-founder of Apollo Management, will mentor in finance and will be announcing uh, many more shortly. Finally, we've committed to Mayor Nutter that we'll be finding ways to share all this talent with the larger Philly community so that the Forbes Under 30 Summit is an event that thousands of people around the region can touch and enjoy. Now, speaking of talent, I'd like to introduce three members of the uh, Forbes 30 Under 30 who represent a small slice of the outstanding young achievers who will be coming to Philadelphia in October. So first, uh, on my left here, we have Josh Sommer. Josh is the founder of the Cordoma Foundation. Now, when Josh found out as a freshman at Duke that he had this rare bone cancer with an average life expectancy of seven years, he didn't let it defeat him. Instead, he decided to defeat it. He started the Cordoma Foundation, which has raised more than $5 million and helped put five clinical trials in the motion. Now, I've come to know Josh since he debuted on our list a year ago, and I promise you, when we do the eight over 80 here in about 2070, uh, I won't be here, but Josh surely will. Uh, he joins us uh, from North Carolina today. Thank you, Randall. Uh, let me just start by saying how great it is to be here in Philadelphia to help launch the first Forbes Under 30 Summit. Uh, I have to say that being a part of that group has really been a game-changing experience for me. Uh, for one, the doors that it's opened uh, have really uh, undoubtedly helped accelerate the growth of my organization, uh, the Cordoma Foundation. But more than that, uh, what I've appreciated most is simply getting to connect with and interact with such an extraordinarily uh, diverse and fascinating group of peers. Um, when Forbes held the, the last 30 under 30 party last year, um, in the span of three hours, I met at least a dozen people who are doing just extraordinary things that I have no doubt are going to change the world and I think will very likely make an impact that all of us are going to feel. So the idea of getting to spend three days here in Philadelphia with a thousand of these people, a thousand of the most fascinating and, and brightest uh, people our age is really just incredibly exciting and I have to believe is gonna lead to great things. So I wanna thank you all for welcoming us to your city, thank the mayor and uh, really looking forward to being back here in October. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. 
on my right, we have Jamel Larkins. Uh, he's 29, but he was, uh, he's actually an aviation veteran. His first solo flight was at age 14. Uh, he began dabbling in aviation startups as a teenager. He flew with the Blue Angels soon thereafter. Uh, and he's now founded Ascension Air Management, which he's positioning as the net jets of piston aircraft. Uh, this year, he, uh, Jamel expects his company to do uh, about $13 million in revenue. And he joins us from Atlanta. Well, thank you, Randall. And I also want to just say thank you very much to Forbes and the City of Philadelphia for taking on the responsibilities of putting together this type of event. Uh, I come from the aviation industry. It's been where my background has been and where my passion has been and now where I make my career and my living at. And that industry is very conservative, uh, typically speaking. Um, everything that is typically done the way that it has been done, there's not a lot of people that challenge the situations or the, the norms inside of the industry. So to have someone that's typically old enough or young enough to be the son or grandson of industry leaders that are currently running the industry sometimes get met with a lot of resistance when you try to challenge the way that people typically have done business or reinvent technology to do something different than what typically has been done in the past. But one of the great things that Forbes has done for my company is given us the opportunity to be recognized by one of the prominent financial publications in the country and media outlets. And then that's given us the credibility to go into meetings and meet with aircraft manufacturers, financing organizations, and everybody else, and know that they're actually going to take the time to listen to us. So I'm extremely excited to have Forbes and the city of Philadelphia come together, put together this event where a thousand young people that are interested in changing the world and being a game changer can get together, talk about what's going on, actually develop relationships, and become the Davos for the young community here inside of the United States of America. So once again, thank you guys very much for doing this. It's a huge undertaking, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen here in October. Now, uh, finally, we bring it back to Philly and, and Joyce Meng, who's uh, 27. Uh, and in, in addition to uh, joining uh, the founding team of a new hedge fund, uh, Joyce, who was, a, who was a Rhodes Scholar, actually, she's the co-founder of Giveology, which uses technology to link thousands of donors to dozens of important grassroots projects in education throughout the world. Uh, Joyce incubated Giveology here in Philadelphia uh, at Penn. And those Philly founding roots are now helping students across the world uh, achieve great things. So, Joyce, thank you. We started Givology in a dorm room at the University of Pennsylvania, and it's incredibly exciting and fitting that the Under 30 Summit will take place here in our favorite city. From when we first assembled our team and spent months brainstorming at International House on Chestnut Street to where we are today, with 50 grassroots partnerships in 28 different countries, 18 chapters and 200 volunteers worldwide, and 10,000 donors helping to us reach 3,600 students globally, Philadelphia has always been a central hub of our activities because of its vibrant community of students and professionals eager to make a difference. From participating in the 76ers community nonprofit program and recruiting new chapters and members from the many high schools and colleges in the area, and benefiting from business community pro bono support and legal to SEO and analytics and engaging in the startup scene, Philadelphia is where the global community of Givology converges. As a 100% volunteer-driven initiative, our philosophy is that small dollars and small hours can aggregate into a powerful force of change, and nothing manifests this better than the Under 30 Summit where we can all gather, collaborate, and create something greater together. Everyone has something unique to give, and in giving, we learn something about ourselves and the community around us. It's such an honor to be recognized in the Forbes 30 Under 30 list. For us, it's only a beginning. Thanks so much. So I'll be glad to uh, take some questions. Just a couple, left, just a couple uh, final thoughts. Hold on for a second. Um, so, uh, two things. Uh, Randall, you should know uh, that um, the um, productivity level uh, in uh, at least the mayor's office has dropped significantly um, as a result of this announcement since almost all the young people in my office are here uh, for, for this. The second is uh, I've received a ton of emails uh, from some other members of the administration now petitioning for a 300 over 30 
uh, uh, kind of event uh, in Philadelphia, so that some of us who maybe were uh, slightly late, uh, late bloomers, I was joking with uh, Jamel uh, that um, even though obviously I'm way aged out of this, even when I was aged in, I would not have been considered uh, under any terms or conditions because I hadn't done anything uh, by, uh, by that time. But, uh, you know, hope springs eternal, and uh, we are uh, certainly excited uh, about uh, this announcement and the opportunity to be this uh, first host city. With that uh, having been said, I'd uh, be glad to take any questions from the news media. Yes, sir. Sure. I'm sorry, to the bidding process? There was no bidding process here. I think you heard Randall basically say that uh, he chose Philadelphia. And so it was a, a conversation um, where we actually just sat down and talked about the facts and why Philadelphia would be a great place. Some of the things that I reiterated in my comments and the mayor echoed as well. And, uh, and Forbes chose Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, part of what makes it special is uh, that the predominant uh, attendees in the, for the summit will be from the 30 under 30 list. It's a chance to have an incredible peer-to-peer -peer discussion. So the uh, invitees will be from the uh, Forbes 30 under 30. We've told them uh, if they want to bring a business partner uh, or somebody else they can vouch for or who they work with, that's okay. But the attendees will be from the under 30. We will take uh, applications from other people who aren't on the list who could add something, but it's going to be very small and very selective. This um, summit is for the people on the 30 under 30 list because, again, those people, and it's over a thousand at this point, have been hand selected uh, and hand vetted. These are the people uh, who are changing the world right now, and we think will be changing the world for the next 50 years. Yes, we've done the, we've done the full 30 under 30, 30 list for the past three years. It's 30 people under 30 in 15 different fields: education, technology, science. So we have each year 450 people times three uh, gives you over a thousand. So, uh, Bob, in terms of your second question, um, which I think went to how does this all get organized? Um, we're working through a series of details in the partnership with uh, Forbes. There'll be uh, sponsorship uh, opportunities uh, that we'll be working on. There's sponsorship opportunities, of course, that Forbes will be working on. There are, we believe, um, a ton of companies, uh, corporate en entities uh, in particular, uh, who will want to be associated with this particular event as a sponsor. There'll be all kinds of events and activities. The main activities uh, actually will be at the Pennsylvania Convention Center, but there'll be other venues all over the city. Uh, and so this is uh, um, you know, somewhat centrally located in terms of many events at the Convention Center, but there'll be a bunch of stuff happening in other parts of the city of Philadelphia, and we're going to encourage uh, many uh, groups, organizations, companies uh, to uh, partner with us on this uh, uh, first ever event. Sure. I'm holding all the uh, over 30 uh, <laughs> tickets. If you uh, let me see uh, either your AARP uh, card or uh, Social Security uh, card or you know Medicaid, Medicare, something like that, uh, we'll consider uh, we'll consider you. Uh, I don't know. We'll, no, we'll I see. It really, it really uh, is uh, an event primarily for the people who've been who've been judged to be uh, game changers, who've been on the list. That's part of what makes it special: is the ability to have a true peer-to-peer -peer discussion. Again, we will we will take applications uh, from people who say, "I can add something," and I might even be 35, but I can add something, and we will take those on a case-by-case -case basis. But it's really meant primarily for the people who've been on the 30-30 list. But they've all been vetted. They're all incredible, as you see here. Uh, and that's going to lead to real, true, peer-to-peer -peer discussion. So there's not really going to be any way to the No, that's actually not true, because we, uh, from the beginning, the mayor has made clear um, that bringing all this talent to the city, we should figure out ways to share that. So we uh, have 
initiated conversations with different universities to bring uh, a lot of our speakers to lectures at different colleges. Uh, and we are working on different ideas, whether it's with music or with food, to take this aggregated talent and share with, with Philadelphia at large so, so that literally thousands of people in Philadelphia will get to touch this while also letting the people on the 30, 30, under 30 list at the under 37 have a true peer-to-peer -peer discourse. Yeah. That's kind of an inside-outside. Anything else? Anyone else? Tom, we good? Fantastic. Where are you from? Where? where where are you from? You have media outlet or? Okay. Why don't you give me the first part? I couldn't hear you. What's the first part of your question? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I heard. We have. Uh, uh, we actually have Taylor Culliver, uh, who's coordinating our our volunteer uh, program. So we will actually we are interested in working with all the local colleges for people who are business students or or uh, or budding scientists to have a chance again to to participate. Uh, we haven't, we haven't got, you know, the, the price to attend for the uh, under 30 delegates is zero. Um, and we haven't, you know, we haven't fleshed out a full P&L. We, uh, again, the idea is so powerful uh, and important. Uh, and so we're just going at this with the idea this is, this is you know, something that, that needs to be done. This is in many ways uh, a product of uh, the list themselves and that literally and Josh can speak to this. Last year, again, we had a, we had a small party, about 150 from the list at South by Southwest, and it was just three hours. And at the end, all we heard was, can we all get together? How can we get together and turn this into a movement? Uh, so we, we've been listening on this as much as we've been leading, and that, that's what's driving a lot of this. I think for something like this, you know, we want to be clear. Um, this is about... Uh, talent, it's about ideas, it's about sharing, it's about opening this community up. Clearly you put a thousand people, you know, in different venues and more who will participate. I mean, you're going to generate some economics, but I think at the moment, uh, for today, I mean, it's kind of hard to say what, what that will be, but I, I would expect uh, if you're in Philadelphia for three or four days, you know, you'll probably spend some money. Yeah. Thank you all. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.